everybody. At the Chaos Computer Club, we have the tradition to include the option to buy a badge at every single big event that we have. So these technical gizmos got way more complex during the past years. And part of the team that created the badges for you is going to present how to get the most of it today. And um, welcome with me to the talk of how to grow flower, Schneider, Timansku, and Q3K. Hello, thanks everyone for coming. Um, next to me is Q3K and Timon, I'm Schneider. Um, we are part of the team who developed the flower batch. Some of you already have it around uh, their necks and that's, that's great. Um, I just want to make very clear, we're just a part of the team. There's so many people behind this project and not everyone wants to stand in the limelight. So um, big thanks to everyone who made this possible. When we came up with the idea of the flower batch like over one and a half years ago, it was mainly about the idea, hey, music is something which connects people and it's something where you can start interacting without having you know, any other kind of common ground and it's, it's very you know, easy to get in touch and that's why we made it. That's why we have it here at camp and I hope that's what you will do and you know, learn something, make some music, um, play together. That's the important thing. That's what I want to see. Um, now to the most important part of this talk. Please pick up your badge. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the map of the camp. The red arrow says where you can pick it up. And uh, why am I mentioning this? Uh, oh, this is how it looks like. There's uh, super uh, happy angels which uh, will uh, gladly hand you out your badge. And the thing is that uh, we have a lot of them. Right, and we need to get rid of them because we want to convert our tent into a hack center where everyone can sit and hack on their badges, uh, hack on software, hardware, whatever. And we're cleaning out this stuff a little bit at the moment, but please, the e earlier we have all of this stuff gone, um, the more space there is for you to hack on it and um, us uh, having time and energy for workshops and stuff like that. Next most important thing, there's a flyer inside uh, your bag. There's a small typo, flower. You spell it with a three. If you ever see a domain with an E inside, replace the E with a three, and then you actually get to the flower webpage and not some uh, $10,000 SIDO domain park <laughs> thing. Um, we tried to get the domain, and it's not that easy, like the wrong one. Next. Uh, this badge, uh, you paid a little bit of money for it, but the components inside are mainly sponsored by generous donors. So far, never at the camp we accepted cash donations, we only accept material and labor, um, if, if this time for the first time, actually labor, and um, analog devices, Bosch, Espressive, Infineon, um, JLC, 3D printing, and Maker Fabs gladly sponsored lots of parts of this badge. Without them, this would not be possible. So um, from my uh, side, big thanks to, to the sponsors. <laughs> and I hope that we chose a selection of chips which uh, makes it easy for you to develop lots of apps for the flower. Um, next. There are some uh, difficult things about putting this thing together and we're just listing the most important parts so you get a working badge which is not damaged and sounds nice and looks nice. And number one is the little switch there. Be gentle with it. Uh, it's the number one uh, failure case at the moment when you uh, slide it that it breaks off. Just be gentle and also make sure that it's in the off position when you put together your flower, so you don't put something together which is turned on and suddenly does stuff. What is the off position? Off position is inside, right? The idea of the switch is that if you move it in across the PCB, it's protected and you can store your flower and it doesn't break off anymore. 
Um, next most uh, critical thing is the alignment of the two PCBs. If you look straight down on your two PCBs, make sure that the holes are perfectly aligned. This is an example of a not aligned hole. Don't try to put a screw inside that thing and turn it on. Um, your batch might get uh, hot or turn on some LEDs, which it shouldn't, and stuff like that. It should look like this. This is how it exactly it should look like, perfectly aligned when you look straight down. Um, just put the badge in front of you, look straight at it. If everything is aligned, not offset at all, then you can turn it on. If you have a red microphone LED which turns on, or if your bo top board gets hot, turn off your badge, take the PCBs apart again, and align them properly. That's how you can see that it's not working. Next thing is, um, we have this uh, 3D printed spacer, thanks to JLC PCB, and it should sit flush with your um, PCBs. Uh, otherwise, you might not get a working display. And uh, most likely, you have some cable between your spacer and your PCB. Cable management is the most difficult part of putting this thing together. And um, if you have everything put together, nice and well, you'll have perfectly flush and, and parallel PCBs with no air gap or anything like that inside. Um, this is wrong. You have a significant air gap in there. Yeah. So it should not look like this. Um, help each other out. There's many people who have put this thing together, many people who visited our camp already and got help. And um, you can ask anyone and, you know, don't always have to come to us, but uh, there's a lot of people who already know how to do this. The, like, once more, thanks to the team, also thanks to the angels. We had uh, around 200 hours of uh, work from uh, angels, which were sent from heaven to us to uh, flash all of these devices and put it into bags, otherwise we couldn't hand them out. Um, lots and lots of thanks to the angels. They pushed through yesterday and backed everything together, even though we thought we need two more shifts today. And we were done yesterday evening. Uh, and really, that, that made our evening because we knew, whew, we don't have to figure out anymore how we are going to organize this today. Um, you can see there's... Uh, over, like, that's roughly a year of history now in our uh, yeah, Git repository of all the people who are committed. And, like, it must be a dozen or two dozen people behind the scenes making all of this possible. Um, I cannot express my gratitude enough to all the hard work and all the things which happened from mechanical design, synthesizer design, uh, application framework, getting stuff. <laughs> it's uh, surprisingly hard sometimes to, to get something to the right place and then ship it around the world two times, just so it ends up again here. Not too much, but at least a little bit. And um, without the expertise of a lot of people, this wouldn't have been possible. I can't mention all of them right now. Something about the hardware. We are only using open source tools and we have a complete representation of this device in several kinds of uh, in FreeCAD and, and KiCAD and we have put all of this together. You have a complete 3D model of everything of this badge so if you want to extend it or print something around it or figure out how does it look like, even the cables are modeled inside. It's there, it's in the repository and the person who made all of this possible, like the integration wanted me to say, uh, give a shout out to the people of the um, Assembly 4 workbench and the KiCad uh, step-up workbench, who, which makes this possible. And apparently these two plugins for the FreeCut software are maintained by one person each. And um, yeah, sometimes open source just sits on one person and that's not great. We, we should change that, so huge thanks to these people. Um, they made this possible. Thanks. Okay. And, and thanks to these tools, you can do interesting stuff. Uh, so for example, the, the shape of the flower, these are circles put together and arranged so that uh, it resembles this, this um, flower shape. And how do you place LEDs exactly the right way at the right angle without going mad? Well, 
<laughs> you write Python in uh, FreeCAD to export coordinates and angles, and then you write Python in KiCAD to import it back in, and automatically you get all of this stuff arranged and you don't go mad. Um, it's cool to work with these tools and the stuff which is possible today. So I talked a lot about hardware and how to not break your batch. Um, Q3K is going to continue and talk a little bit about what to do with your batch, specifically from a software perspective, because there's a lot to say and a lot of cool stuff which is possible if we... And we have a few more days to, to get it done. Okay. Right, so uh, first, most important thing, we have docs. We worked quite a bit of them being usable. Please, anytime you want to know anything about the batch, just go to docs.flower.garden, flower with a free, not an E, and you'll find guides about everything from assembling your batch, how to use the built-in software, how to program your batch, and then also how to hack on your batch at like a lower firmware level. So anytime you want to know anything, go there. If it's not there, that's a bug, and it should be there, and we'll fix it. But yeah, I want to talk a bit about programming the badge and most, more importantly about programming the badge in the environment that we gave you. Like the entire an environment is based around MicroPython. So if you ever wrote Python, or even if you dealt, dealt with MicroPython before, you will feel more or less at home. Uh, however, it's important to know that to get this badge to be a nice interactive toy with audio, with graphics, with pretty LEDs, we had to build our own framework on top of that. So not only need to do with MicroPython, but also we have to learn our tiny little app framework slash ecosystem called STEM, spelled with a free, not an E. Um, and yeah, as I said before, it's all on docs. Uh, in this case, the first thing you'd want to read when trying to program the badge is to go to the programming section, and then you'll learn how to connect to your badge from a PC or from an Android phone, how to access the MicroPython REPL, which is the read, evaluate, print loop, which is the main console you interact with, how to transfer files back and forth from the badge in different modes, how to run your own code on the badge, and then finally, how to get started with writing applications against our app framework. Um, just a few pointers, since I'm already here. You want to look at three basic classes, responder, view, application, and that goes you from drawing something on screen to having an application that appears to your menu. Um, inside the framework itself, other than just the stuff to get apps working, there's also a sub-library called Bloombox, and Bloombox is what makes your badge make music and or sounds. Bloombox is really cool, and here's a snippet on how you can get a uh, simple simple synthesizer playing a sound on your speakers. You can press Ctrl-C in the REPL, paste this after importing Bloombox, and you'll hear a sound, and then you can take the third line from the bottom, which says the tone, put it in a loop, and iterate over value zero, four, and seven, and your badge will place a nice arpeggio in a major uh, as well, yeah, the docs are there. Read the docs. If the docs are not uh, understandable, please let us know. We'll do our best to fix them. Another big component of the, of the programming environment is CTX. CTX is an amazing little library for drawing vector graphics. All of the menu you will see, all of the graphics you see, apart from like one example, are all built real time from vector graphics on the badge itself. So you do not need to pre-render fonts or upload image files, you just write these little lines that let you create a rectangle in this case. And in the case of the STEM environment, you put that in the draw method of your responder class. And every so often, the badge will say, hey, app, what can I render? You respond with this, and then you see a nice rectangle. Uh, that was all about the kind of built-in ecosystem we have, built around STEM. There's also this whole entire different world of if you want to work on the firmware itself. Uh, it is unfortunately not fully in MicroPython, it is C, and it is based around the ESP-IDF. If you've ever worked with ESP32 chips before, you'll be familiar with ESP-IDF. Same as with, as with our MicroPython code, we had to take it and we had to sprinkle in some of our own code to make it work. For example, all of the uh, graphics stack interactions, all of the Bloombox interactions, um, uh, things like reading sensors that's all implemented in C and so is managing the lifecycle of the application via MicroPython. Uh, the docs are all there. It will take you from installing all the dependencies. If you're running NixOS, it's very easy. If you're not, I'm sorry, but we did our best to document this. <laughs> it will tell you how to build the C firmware, how to flash and test it. It will tell you how to debug it. And here's uh, a little mention that we, will, we have a little development board for the, for the batch called the Flowerpot, which Timon is going to talk about in a second. It is not strictly necessary for 
day-to-day -day development, but if you want to hack on the firmware, it's very useful, especially if you want to, like, for example, maybe fix some of our USB issues, because the USB stack is, eh. So yeah, um, yeah please, please take a look. Please uh, send us your merge requests, and file more issues, or just come chat with us. We will be implementing a lot of features over the next couple of days, both in the stem land in MicroPython, as well as on the low-level firmware. And I'll now let Timon talk a bit more about the flower pot. Yeah. So <clears throat> just quickly on like, what is that thing? Who is it useful for? Um, I made the thing like two weeks ago. It was like, we need some way to access both like the U, like there's a JTAG UR thing with ESP bar chips. And you need that if you need like early boot traces or if you need to work on USB and need to debug at the same time because if you work on USB you can't use it for debugging anymore so that is a bit of a difficult thing that's what this guy is for um, I designed it a little bit so it's useful for other stuff in the future um, how this works on USB-C um, you get these extra pins called SPU sideband pins and we place the TX and RX on those pins it's a little bit illegal but it works and it doesn't damage any devices, but just to be clear, it's not fully proper, but it's really cool for like just cheap way to get UART out of your devices. And you can use this in the future as well for like other boards. Um, you can change the I.O. voltage and stuff like that. So hopefully it has a use past the flower um, if you do embedded stuff. Um, right, what it is, a USB hub and the USB to UART converter. Um, so you yeah get serial and a USB hub in one. So both devices connect to your computer. That is very important to do that kind of development. You can buy one at the Batch Village right now. Uh, there's not many of them. So like, if you do plan on making really cool stuff, more on the low level, you can get one. Um, but yeah, there's not like that many. As the slide says, and as you might have noticed, the firmware is a bit buggy. Uh, so we do encourage you to learn how to upgrade the batch firmware and upgrade it early, upgrade it often. We will do our best to, to, to fix those bugs, but you know, you still have to upgrade your batch. We don't have magical over-the-air upgrades yet. Um, if you have a browser which supports web serial, for example, Chromium or Chrome or derivatives, you should be able to just plug in your badge and go to this website and it's going to tell you how, what to do with the batch and then update it for you. That is a full update. It is going to come out in the same way as it, we gave it to you just with a newer version of software. There's also a special flow for um, upgrading where you can copy the file, the uh, part of the upgrade file, a bin file, onto your batch, reboot into recovery mode by holding down the right trigger, like so and select that file to flash. This is not a full update, but if you don't, have, uh, don't happen to have Chromium on you or don't have a PC on you even, it's, it's good enough. Uh, speaking of firmware, um, we have this entire stack we wrote, but we encourage you to not only extend that stack, but if you want, make something new, make something crazy, port Doom, port Quake, uh, rewrite it in Rust. I don't know, do something fun. And the, the cool part is that as long as you conform to our existing partition layout, which you can find in our main repository or in our example repository for an external application, you will be able to coexist with the main firmware. And you can distribute your little alternative firmware as a bin file, which, same as the main firmware, can be uploaded by the user to the SD card and then flashed from recovery mode. So we hope that within a couple of days we'll see some absolutely amazing stuff that we couldn't even envision to have in the main firmware, but someone will implement them as a thing from scratch. Uh, and yeah, I, I have an old Doom proof of concept work. If someone wants to move it forward to the new framework, uh, hit me up. And one last thing. Uh, two days before we arrived here, I had this um, moment that made me realize I should run Ethernet on the badges. You might notice they do not have an Ethernet port, but that did not stop me. What they do have are 3.5 millimeter ports. Turns out you can switch them to UART, connect these badges together, and write a few hundred lines of C to turn every badge into a virtual switch. And you can now chain your badges together, and they will all bring up their own little Ethernet domain. And with that, you can use a protocol like IPv6 and UDP to just like blast packets between badges. 
Uh, I'm waiting for someone to write an IRC client for this. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone else, or maybe the same person, to make a three and a half mil adapter to Ethernet. And then I'm waiting for c 3 to get really angry with me. <laughs> that being said, this is it for the software pack. Now I'm giving you back to Timon, who will talk a lot about the production aspects of this badge. Right, so that section could probably be a talk in itself, but we thought we'd just give you a little bit of impressions of like what goes into producing thousands of these things uh, for an event like this. Um, yeah, what you see there is like intermediary steps of the PCBA aspects. Um, let's see if those videos load. Yeah. So top left, that's the pick and place machine currently building some top parts. Um, then they're testing. So actually important aspect is like checking that all the PCBs work on a basic level so that when we hand them out to you and you have an issue, that we can at least rule out there's no manufacturing fault there. Um, and the bottom video is uh, automatic optical inspection with a very useful technology that just checks every solar joint automatically for you. Um, yeah. And yeah, one actually big aspect of this badge was making custom colors. Um, usually for PCBs, you get a very strict set of like colors that are just being made for PCBs. You know, they are very technical colors. They need to withstand a lot of heat, and th they are engineering colors, so to speak. And that makes it kind of limited of what you can get. So our manufacturing partner, Maker Fabs, helped us make custom colors, which is actually really hard to do because. Uh, the badge colors, uh, the, the event colors, are very special Pantone colors that are neon. You cannot do that in anything but that those special colors. They need additives and stuff like that. But we tried our best to get as close to those to that pink and that green as possible. Um, but because the basic colors that are available are only RGB essentially, as soon as you mix them, uh, the resulting color becomes darker than the original colors. And then you need to add a little bit of white, which makes it lighter again, but it also reduces saturation. So we had like more than a month of back and forth and different color variations and tests. Like you see some of the pinks that came out of this at the top right, um, which not all of them looked like pink. Um, so this was a bit of a process, but um, yeah, that gave us custom silk screen and a nice pink top PCB. Um, yeah. And then there were also a lot of accessories, which was almost more work than the PCBs, to be honest, um, at least in ours, I would say. So a lot of little things go into things like this. Uh, we have actually custom printed SD cards. There was no need to custom print them, but it turns out if you buy 4,000 of those, the printing comes for free. Um, so <laughs> why not add it, you know? Um, then top right, uh, bottom right, sorry, that's uh, the molding tool for the battery cover on the back. So that was stamped steel. Um, then, yeah, the audio cable is the only not custom part here. Um, then the battery in the middle, that blue big thing, uh, at least, you know, custom cabling there. Um, they made it a little thicker than we wanted it to be. That's why, sorry, it's a bit hard to insert. Um, in the middle, a printed piece of, yeah, it's a printed piece of uh, the spacer, we call it, um, that keeps your batch as a secure sandwich. Um, and then covered up by that, the lanyards, also custom colors, trying to match the camp. Um, in most of these cases, like if you order a lot of stuff, making it custom is essentially for free, unless there's a high engineering fee to like make the tooling for it. So with the battery cover, for example, we mostly paid for the tool. The resulting products become very cheap because like, most of that comes from the tooling. Uh, the, most of the costs come from the tooling. Um, the display is also a custom thing, um, at least the top glass. So that is a stepped glass display. Um, yeah, you don't really get to buy that usually. Um, and yeah, we had that custom made so that we can have a flush finish on the PCB and it's not like a display sitting on top of it which is like very prone to breaking and it's very robust so at least the glass is thick so like you know if you accidentally smash a matte bottle on it please don't do that but 
it should hopefully survive. Um, the custom glue sheet, also something that didn't work out as well as intended. Uh, it's a bit hard to separate, but um, yeah, that is used to uh, insert the display onto the top PCB. Um, and there's a couple spare pieces to like fix the wiring, so I had to have some questions about what the glue is for or the result. The other pieces you're not using, you can use those either to, you know, add little hardware yourself. Like it's very strong glue, actually. You can just stick some stuff inside to it. Or the the cabling is a bit weird. So like if your cable always goes under some weird spot, use the glue to just fix it in place. Um, uh, custom printed bags, actually food safe coloring, uh, fully recyclable. You can put that in a compost. Um, Speakers, also custom cables, and then little rubber feet. Uh, some people are also confused about those. You can add those to the bottom, and then that stands ta uh, like safely on a table, doesn't you know flick around. Um, screws, little Allen key, and the sandpaper. Also, some questions there. You can use that to hack your batch. So inside, there's what's called a quick connector. Um, it's basically I squared C. If you want to add like a space where you can route a cable to the outside, you can use the sandpaper to modify the spacer. Or if you have issues with the battery cable slot, you can extend it a bit. It's, it's a little hacking tool. That's it. Um, and one thing that didn't make the cut in the production, not because it wasn't useful, it was a really cool machine. And I'm sad we didn't get to use it, but for very many reasons, one of them being logistics, we couldn't use that. But uh, yeah, can you? What are you doing? Trying to plant. Yeah, it's just uh, should be with. Oh, nope. You have to click on the. Mm, sorry about that. Technical problems. So m mounting the display was a long uh, process to figure out how we actually fix the display in this thing. And um, before we arrived to at the actual solution, we considered building a machine which dispenses glue and picks a display and puts it there perfectly and does it for us. And a team member actually did build it. Oh, come on. Just, just, yeah, okay. So it, it's a, the most professional thing I've ever seen. Made. Like, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Rags. And. If yeah. you're interested in this, hit up Rahix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, he's on the metrics. Um, yeah, and at the yeah last thing, make apps. Uh, please get started. Like write MicroPython stuff. No matter what your experience level is, I'm sure you can make something fun. Um, especially instruments would be cool to just you know see more stuff out there. We made the platform, and we're hoping community will make really cool stuff in here. Uh, one mention like. This thing has BLE. We haven't used anything that, but that could be a cool thing to use. And Wi-Fi, but that will be probably makes the knock sad if we do something with that. But it, it has Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, if you are C an embedded person, we need help with the main firmware. And also, if you are interested in writing docs, also would be very helpful. There's so much stuff to document still. Um, yeah, write native apps. Write something cool that's completely different. You don't have to use our firmware. Um, come up with your own things. Part Doom, for example. Um, help each other out, like, you know, hack together on it, do something together. It's, it's fun to, to yeah, just do something together with that thing. And uh, one cool thing, on day four, there will be a demo party that has a badge section. So if you have something really cool to show off with your badge, you can enter that and show your badge demo. Um, yeah, check out ontrack.camp. Uh, it's at NotX. Um, yeah. And... Also check out Care Social Flower Batch on Mastodon for any workshop announcements. Thank you. Thank you.
very much, guys. This was a really informative talk. Um, we have some time for questions. Are there any questions from the people here? Yes, please. So the question was, how are you generating the sound, guys? Can you please answer that now? Um, there's a dedicated audio codec um, from analog devices. It's connected via I2S to the uh, ESP32 S3. And it has a, I don't know, 48 kilohertz ADC-DAC uh, combination in there. Um, it has uh, multiple input and output channels. So you can output something on the speakers, or you can route it to the uh, headphone jack. And we also have a line in, as well as a microphone. We didn't mention that uh, here yet. And you can, in software, select where you want to get your signal from, and it does the A to D, D to A um, conversion for you. Yeah. I think in the, in the board support package, we have uh, like the, the brown software for that. So if you want to port some other audio, ESP audio application, you can like plump this up somehow and, and get it going. Yes, please. Next question. Yeah, so uh, uh, is there anything uh, in the works depending on how to use this as a MIDI controller? Uh, can you please repeat that a bit louder so I can repeat your question? Uh, is there anything in the works on how to use this as a MIDI controller? So is there anything in the works on how to use it as a MIDI controller? Uh, the software should be there. What is missing is the documentation. If you look at the docs section for badge link, that is one of the expected usages of it. Um, it should work with your current firmware, but we need to document that better. And we will. So the question was how to access the serial connection as a follow-up question? So that's part of um, the docs not being good. That serial connection is actually, yeah, MIDI is basically serial or like a variation on the serial protocol. That docs tell you how to attach the serial to one of the three and a half millimeter jacks. That is one of the modes you can switch the three and a half millimeter jack to is to just blast out serial. And then you can enable MIDI on top of that. And that makes you, that you have MIDI through the three and a half mil jacks. There's more than one. There's three serials in this chip. <laughs> uh, basically, what we can promise is that I will update the docs after this to make this more clear. Okay. How to access the USB? I think maybe you should talk about it after the talk. Um, this would be great. Then you can clarify any further questions. Quick, quick note on that because we forget to tell everyone the three millimeter, three and a half millimeter jacks. We have two of those. You can switch those to GPIO pins. You can put any peripheral on those GPIO pins. If you're hardware hacking, you can use those jacks for that. Um, yes. Um, any further questions? In the back, yes. You with the flower. <laughs> can you please come a bit closer? Repeat the question. We have some background noise. The, the, the question was, what is the problem with the, with the USB stack I mentioned? And the answer is, I wrote it and it's not very good. <laughs> um, currently, we have issues with the serial connection sometimes dying. There is a load bearing um, decrease buffer size by one in there with a comment saying, I don't know why I need this. So in more practical terms, if you have any USB knowledge, come talk to me afterwards because I just need to like talk with someone else and like air my grievances and hopefully we can get things to work slightly better. Yes, next question. Yeah, hey. schematics are, uh, so if you go to flower.garden, Can you repeat the question oh, sorry. first? If sorry. we've put up schematics, um, or if we publish them, if you go to flower.garden, there's a link to our GitLab repository, and there's a hardware um, repo inside with uh, all the hardware design files. I think uh, PDF exports of the schematics as well. Nicely rendered pink. PDF exports <laughs> in pink. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, um, person in the red t-shirt. Okay, the, 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 how are we going to distribute the application? That's a very good question. Um, if we the prepare, oh was... sorry, the question right. being how are you going to distribute the applications? The answer is, uh, if we prepare slightly better, we, I we would have ended this talk and, hey, here's this distribution thing we just came out with. You have to wait like a few more hours and we hopefully will have something. And you'll, you'll post that where? We'll post that everywhere. The question was, where will you post that? The answer is, we'll post that on Mastodon, on Matrix. I'll, I'll make a smoke signal. I, I don't know. We'll, you'll, <laughs> we'll make sure everyone knows. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we have another question in the back. Can you come here a bit further so we can hear you? Do you actually have the documentation of the machine that made the flower? The, what? the machine that made the flower. The question was, do you have documentation for the machine that made the flower? Which machine do you mean? Do you mean the video we showed of yes. the... That machine was unfortunately not used in production. It was a proof of concept that could have been used, but for many reasons we ended up not using it. Uh, I think Rahix, who is the author, uh, that's the person you should talk about this. I wouldn't be surprised if he would put this up on his blog very soon. Come to the batch tent. What printer was it? No, this. Uh, <laughs> so the question was was it a Prusha? Uh, <laughs> I am not Rahix, but as far as I understand this project, this was a fully self built motion system from scratch. The orange similarity is totally accidental. There's one other question behind the box. Or? Yes. Um, will you allow anonymous access to git.flower.garden? The question was, will you allow anonymous access to git.flower.garden? Um, we didn't know this was an issue. I cannot promise you we will enable anonymous access. Or you mean like downloading or contributing? You should be able to clone it over HTTPS. <laughs> oh, um, yes, the start page does redirect you to a login page. If you go to git.flower.garden slash flower, <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Speaking of which, if anyone is really good at GitLab administration stuff, also come by the tent, please. <laughs> okay, next question. It should be, so the question is the ground on the three and a half millimeter jacks compared to the USB ground, is there a potential in between? Well, they're all the same ground, uh, I can say. So you, you might have a few millivolts here and there maybe of noise. Okay, the person who asked the question said they had another batch at some point who had multiple volts of uh, potential difference between that. That's not the case here. You can safely attach this stuff and um, multiples of them to a computer, attach them to each other and should just work. So I think we have time for one last question. Is there any person? Sorry, you already have one, so this... So uh, manufacturing, we, that's why I say JLC 3D printing, they contribute 3D printing, they do a lot of these things these days, also CNC machining, but they did not contribute PCBs at all. Uh, Maker Fabs did our PCBs and PCBA, also the testing and everything else. Uh, they are also located in Shenzhen, and we can highly recommend them. They have been a huge help uh, supporting us with so many things, like getting taking packages and packing things, and yeah, so just general logistics. And the, yeah. And we had uh, seven revisions in total um, until we committed to production. So the, the very first revision was a Raspberry Pi with a CapTouch controller I hacked from a, a product I, I work on for my day job and then a quick turn PCB and all coupled together with lots of wires and I showed that to people and do you think this is nice and they, 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 they were interested and then from that on we had like yeah, at least seven revisions if not more.
because we at some point branched out and then didn't follow these branches. But if you like look at the, the one branch which made it, that's seven revisions. Yeah. How many layers? It's a four-layer PC, two times four layers. Yes. Okay, then thank you so much for this interesting Q&A. And I'm very happy that we have these beautiful badges. Thank you.